This is the fifth in a series of videos about Leonardo da Vinci's Virgin of the Rocks, of which two versions exist, one in the National Gallery in London and the other in the Louvre Museum in Paris. It is generally agreed by art historians that the painting in the Louvre is the earlier of the two, and in the first of these series of videos, I put forward the case for the painting in the National Gallery actually being the original painting, the one delivered to the confraternity of the Immaculate Conception in 1483 by Leonardo da Vinci and his assistants Ambrogio and Evangelista de Predis. I put forward a case for the King of France as being the patron and commissioner of the second work, the Louvre version of the Virgin of the Rocks. Supporting evidence is given in the other three videos. Here I want to look at the idea that the first painting, that is, the one in the Louvre, the painting said to be the first painting, was delivered in 1483 and then removed by Leonardo da Vinci for reasons unknown, but presumably because he hadn't been adequately paid for it. It is then, it is said, sold to a different client and the London painting painted in its stead, even though we have absolutely no indication at all that the confraternity commissioned or paid for a second painting or that Leonardo and the de Predis could afford to do a second painting. What we know about the London painting is that there were at least two hands involved, and what we know about the painting in the Louvre is that it is exclusively by the hand of Leonardo da Vinci. My theory is that the National Gallery painting fulfills the commission and that the painting in France was painted for the King of France, which is why it was a commission by just a single person and the work of just a single artist. Leonardo only had the King of France, not a committee, to satisfy. So let us presume that the painting now in London was delivered on time for the feast day of the Immaculate Conception in 1483. But the money that Leonardo and his associates were paid was barely enough to cover the cost of the materials and that when the painting was delivered, it was a very smooth and highly finished work on the whole, but parts of it were still unfinished. And we have a pretty fair idea as to which parts were still unfinished and were completed by Leonardo's assistants and not by Leonardo himself. Those parts were the foliage, the flowers in the foreground, and certain details in the figures. We can also presume that the gilt had not yet been applied to the halos and the cross of St John, and that the side panels of the angels, which were supposed to be of four angels on each side playing musical instruments, that these had never been completed and were undertaken by Ambrogio de Predi and one of the other assistants of Leonardo, most probably Marco Doggiono. It seems to me absolutely certain that the painting that was ultimately set in place by Ambrogio de Predi in 1508 to receive his final payment of 200 lira was the very same work that had sparked the argument over money in the first place and the very same work that had been delivered in 1483. The first petition concerning money that involves this painting, the first known petition, came a good ten years after the painting was due for delivery. If the painting had not been delivered, then the confraternity would have been petitioning Leonardo and Ambrogio and Evangelista to get their painting delivered, but that just didn't happen. The case for the early delivery date is supported by Angela Ottino della Chiesa, who suggests that the petition to the Duke Lodovico Sforza was an extreme move and that it was probably preceded by negotiation of a more regular kind, the records of which no longer exist. When the side panels were provided, they were not by the master as anticipated. It is clear that ultimately Ambrogio did the finishing. 
But despite the high finish of much of the painting, there are areas of the National Gallery Virgin of the Rocks that have never been completed. One is the left hand of the angel. This is the hand that rests on the back of the Christ child. Was this an oversight, or was it deliberate? Leonardo made great use of gesture in his paintings. Despite its deplorable condition, we can read the whole narrative of the Last Supper via study of the hands. Jesus has his left hand turned upward in the gesture of acceptance, and his right hand turned downward towards Judas, his betrayer. The right hand and the left hand were seen as having different functions. There remains today a superstition that if your right palm itches, you will pay out money, and if your left palm itches, you will receive it. Can it be that in the Virgin of the Rocks, by leaving the left hand of the angel incomplete, Leonardo was saying to the brothers of the confraternity, we have some unfinished business here. Another area of the painting which has been left unfinished is the right hand of the Christ child, the hand that is raised in benediction. This is a very strange thing at a time when the creation of such a work of art was considered an act of worship, and the artwork itself, by nature of its holy subject, took on a mystical property and a liturgical function. The painting was an object of veneration that was destined, like countless icons and images before it, to be invoked in time of plague and strife. One would expect that Leonardo da Vinci, or even a lesser artist like Ambrogio da Predi, would have lavished much care on the depiction of that chubby little hand that is raised in so majestic and meaningful a way as a sign of the Christ's power to heal, to judge, and to save. But it was left incomplete, and with a mere suggestion of the light that touches the Christ child's face and shoulder. Is this an accident? Is it an oversight? Hardly. So it is, that after twenty-five years of wrangling, the confraternity of the Immaculate Conception got, for its money, a most extraordinary and valuable artwork. But what their total of 1,000 lira could not buy was the blessing that that artwork should have delivered. <laughs>